Late February, and heavy pack ice has choked the northeast coast. It's pushed its way into Trinity Bay, into the harbor at Catalina, and around the trawlers tied up at the fishery products plant. Ice on this coast usually means all fishing has stopped for the winter. But that just applies to the inshore boats. This is a deep sea port, and winter is the height of the fishing season, the season for northern cod. Every day, trawlers leave for the grounds off southern Labrador. There's one heading out today, the Zanvoort, and Land and Sea is making the trip with her. <coughs> Most of the Zanvoort 16-man crew come from the Bonavista Peninsula, from towns like Melrose, Dunfield, Port Rexton, Catalina. A couple of men come from the Bjorn Peninsula. They've had their three days shore leave. Now they're eager to get back at the fish. The captain is Mike Melvin. Mike comes from Bay Bulls on the southern shore. This is his fifth trip as captain of the Zanvoort, one of the company's newest trawlers. The Zanvoort was planned and built in Marystown. Designers at Fishery Products and the shipyard wanted a boat tough enough to take the severe ice conditions that come with the northern cod fishery. The way Mike sees it, this spring will put the Zanvoort through her paces. Well, this boat uh, is built for heavy ice, is she not? Uh, she's built for a certain amount of ice. Uh, she has uh, something like three-quarter plate, uh, ribs, a foot apart, all through her. Uh, she can uh, she can fish quite heavy ice. But you still had to be pretty careful though, sometimes. Oh, yes. She's not an icebreaker. She's uh, just a well-built trawler. The harbor ice poses no problem. And before long, we're headed out to sea. No need to call in the Zanvoort's 2200 horsepower just yet, not till we meet the heavier ice. Actually, we were lucky. Just after we left, the pack closed in. Another trawler that left Catalina a day or so behind us was jammed just outside the harbor for nine days. I haven't seen this much ice uh, up this far, uh, not since I've been at it. Uh, in 73, I believe, we were jammed in St. John's, but it was sometime in March. Uh, now uh, St. John's is closed, uh, just about all the coast is closed, and there's only the last of February. So I think it's going to be a uh, very, very bad spring for ice. It wasn't too long before we met the heavier ice, big, tightly packed pans. It stretched as far as the eye could see, and it made for slow going. Although the fishing grounds are due north, that's not the course Mike sets. He charts a route almost due east to where there's open water. Where in the chart now is Catalina in relation to the edge of, uh, of the ice pack around the coast? Well, there's that line right here, and this air is roughly the edge of the ice pack. That, that line that's thrown in here? This line I've drawn here in chart. So how far now is that extending off from Catalina? Well, our closest point to the edge of the ice, we have a band of light ice running off to the eastern. So we take advantage of that, and uh, we hit the edge of the ice approximately 100 miles from Catalina, east of Catalina. So instead of leaving Catalina and going straight north, you, uh, you go due east almost? Yes, yeah, certainly, because right now the ice conditions are such that uh, it would take us forever to get north through this ice. It's very heavy ice, uh, all first year ice, but it's very tightly packed and heavy. And uh, our best speed can be made just going through the ice, although it is out of our way, go through the ice and follow the edge of the ice north. It's a 36-hour steam to the Labrador coast. This is Monday afternoon. We won't start fishing before early Wednesday morning. But no one is idle. 
there's work to be done, repairing some tears in the net from the last trip. As the edge of the ice gets closer, the pack starts to loosen. The going gets a lot easier. By dusk, we're nearing open water, and soon we'll turn north for the fishing grounds. Three o'clock, Wednesday morning. 36 hours out of Catalina, the Zanvort re-enters the ice. We've reached the edge of the Labrador Shelf, 120 miles east of Cartwright. This is the home of the northern cod. All of a sudden, we're not alone. The lights from other trawlers are all around us. You, you check around with the skippers to find out uh, where the fish are? Oh, yeah. Yeah, everybody does. Those ones have been fishing here all day, and uh, they uh, have a good idea where the fish is at. So you just check with them and just keep an eye on your finders, fish finders. Right. And we, uh, we don't put an net over it until we find it on, this, uh, on our fish finder. You use both fish finders, do you? you use the... Oh, yeah, well, uh, this sounder here and uh, plus the loop. The loop is more sensitive. Uh, the, the, loop is, the loop is this colored, uh, colored yeah, screen? Yeah, this colored machine here. How do you find fish on that? Well, you can see uh, this, uh, this reddish-green mark here right now. There's approximately five atoms of fish underneath our boat right now. I used to hear all these stories about how great the northern cod was. I mean, you wouldn't believe the marks used to get. Uh, and that, this is an example of it, is it? And this is a very good example of it. Very good example. With marks like these, little time is wasted getting the net in the water. Yeah, Mike, you can get by the pilot now, would you? Oh, more fish coming. Open water to set out in? Well, we don't really need open water. We don't really need open water. If the boat can go through, we can shoot our net. Dollar coming there now. It's minus 15 Celsius on the deck as the trawl is shot out. Mike runs the winches from the wheelhouse. The deckhands watch out for any snags or tangles. Sophisticated electronics make sure the right length of cable is played out for the depth of water. By the time the net starts fishing on the bottom, it's four-fifths of a mile behind the boat. The first tow is underway as the Zandvoort makes her way through these rich, if sometimes crowded, fishing grounds. Well, we have seen like 50, 60 boats, you know, in one spot. Uh, but right now, uh, there's unlikely, uh, well, this winter we haven't seen any more than perhaps 12, 15 at one time. But you got to realize that there's another uh, 15 on the way down, another 15 on the way home at the same time. Uh, uh, they're steaming two, three, four days to get down there. Fishing two, three, four days and steaming home two, three, four days. Uh, you're only getting press one third of the boats on the ground at any given time. So it's, uh, it's a pretty busy fishing area this, this time of year. Uh, very busy. Busy is the word for it, all right. Only an hour after it went in the water, the net is coming back. We must have towed right through the middle of those marks because the bag is full. 30,000 pounds of fish. Before the trip is over, the Zandvoort will have hauled back nearly 20 times this amount of northern cod.
Just before daybreak, the real action starts. Things come alive. The other trawlers get moving, preparing to start the day's fishing. And always, there are the birds. Noddies, tickle aces, and gulls. Wheeling in a constant aerial ballet around the boat. There seem to be boats everywhere. We can count eight just in this small area. Some shooting out, some already hauling back great bags of fish. Some just steaming around looking for marks. It's an awful big ocean to have so many boats together, eight boats. Well, there's a patch of fish there that uh, everybody is trying to tow through and uh, they're all hauling back here in this lake of water and uh, they tow through the fish so there's a very good place to perhaps get net out again. What happens, for instance, if everybody's towing pretty far apart and then someone strikes a big patch of fish, does everybody head for that spot or what? Well, everybody will pretty well converge on that spot of fish. It must create problems though, traffic jams and such. Sometimes, uh, not usually. Everybody's in contact on the VHF constantly and uh, you know, you know what boats are around, you know all the boats, you know all the skippers from talking to them, and uh, oh, it's no problem. No problem, really. You just have to let one another know what, what you're doing. Right, you know, and work it out between yourselves. Uh, perhaps you'd have to alter course for another fellow, or he'd alter course for you, whatever, you know, just to make the thing go uh, smoothly. While we towed through some heavy ice, I had a chance to talk with a couple of the crew about the Northern Cod. Do you make, uh, do you fellas make most of your money at this particular fishery this time of year? Yeah. yeah. From now until April, we make good money, eh? Yeah. So it's the, it's the Northern Cod that uh, you make you make a dollar out of. That's you? right. Yeah. yeah. Like, what do you do the rest of the year the, when you're when you're fishing the rest of the year? Well, we're doing uh, doing our right, I suppose. You know, but not so good at the uh, winter time, eh? Bit of flounder and grey stone turbot, stuff like that, but not so good, but still on all, nothing to complain about, eh? What kind of days do you fellas put in here? What what's your work day? What how long? Oh roughly about eighteen hours. Then you go up below for about six. Then you're up again. You know, the same routine. Eight eighteen, you get six below. So it's not too bad. How about money now? I know that uh, you make a good wage at this. What how's how the wage how much would you earn on a, on one trip like this? Uh, roughly about uh, fifteen or sixteen hundred dollars, just just clear money, eh? That's after all your deductions and everything. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So now, in the run of the year, how many trips would you make? Uh, we made twenty-four last year, twenty-four trips. All right. So the money probably isn't as good as good as that on all the trips, is it? Depending on your trips, right? Yeah. Like, oh, uh, well, you get a good trip this trip, maybe next trip wouldn't be so good, right? So your money would drop. Yeah. Would you find that? Fishing up here off Labrador is when you make your most money? This is when we make our money. This time of year now on the codfish. So you want to make your money on the northern cod? Yeah, that's right, yeah. So how much would you fellas uh, make in a year now if you have a good year's fishing? Uh, around $40,000 or a little better. There's a good dollar to be made here, but it could be better, especially for the company, if they can land a higher quality fish. Better quality brings better prices. That's why fishery products has begun an unusual experiment. They've cut holes in their nets. You can see one of the holes here in the Zandvoort's net. Here's why. In the past, the nets towed by these northern cod trawlers were catching up to 80,000 pounds per tow. But the bigger the tow, 
the greater the pressure on the fish. The result is a lot of bruising and very poor quality. But how do you reduce the amount of fish you catch and still make sure you get a worthwhile tow every time? The solution? Cut a hole in the cod end at a point where you figure you've got about 30,000 pounds of fish. Enough for a good tow, but not an amount that will cause lots of bruising. Once the net fills up as far as the hole, you'll have your 30,000, and any excess fish can escape. We experimented with several things. Uh, short toes didn't work out because uh, uh, the fish was uh, so dense in some places that a few minutes you had a net full. So that didn't work out at all. So what we done, uh, what we eventually done, just got a hole in the cut end. Up so far that we, right now we take back 25, 30,000 pounds maximum. Anything over that just passes on through the hole. Do you find that uh, that makes a difference in uh, the amount of bruising you get in the fish that are pushed uh, back in the net? Well, I guess it's uh, twofold. Um, the fish is in our holding tank in the boat a shorter period of time, and uh, there isn't that much pressure on it while we're towing. So, uh, so we've practically eliminated the bruising. That means you had to make a lot more toes than you used to, though, doesn't it? Yeah, well, that's the only thing. Uh, but then uh, you got to bring in uh, good quality raw material, or they can't do anything within the plant. And that's the name of the game right now is quality. It's too early for any final results, but so far the experiment appears to be having some success. According to fishery products, the Zanvort and other trawlers have been landing more grade A fish. Surprisingly, the smaller tows don't seem to be slowing the boats down. On this trip, the Zanvort caught 550,000 pounds of fish in just 65 hours. She could have taken more. Her hold has a capacity for over 700,000 pounds. But that's another step that's been taken to improve this fishery. A couple of years ago, the northern cod was a free-for-all. The trawler companies caught as much as they could, as fast as they could. In 1981, the quota was gobbled up in just six weeks. The companies learned from that experience. Now each has its own quota, and each is trying to make this fishery last. By limiting their trawlers to less than their capacity, the trawlers will make more trips the season will last longer. That means more work for the trawlermen, more work for the plants, and a more consistent supply of fish for the market. As the northern cod grows in importance, more attention is being paid to designing and building trawlers, especially for this fishery. The Zanvort is a prime example. Not only is her hull built to work in ice, but her fishing gear is designed for these waters too. When her nets are shot out, the warps or cables are run through special davits designed to keep them away from the ice. As soon as we put our net in the water, we put our ice davits down, which puts our warps in the middle of the ramp, and uh, we tow them in the wake of the boat, so we never have any problem. Now, uh, other boats uh, that don't have these davits, what kind of problems do they run into? Well, they have to have clear water for shooting their net. So you can shoot out your net in, uh, even when there's not much open water where the boats can't? Well, where some other boats can't. Uh, we can have 100% ice coverage, and if the ice isn't too heavy to shoot through, you know, we need to uh, go three-quarter speed at least. Uh, we can have 100% coverage and uh, still get our gear on the bottom fish.
On the Zandvoort, the work doesn't stop once the net is back in the water. There's 30,000 pounds of cod in the holding tank. The crew change into their oil clothes, and the trawler becomes a fish plant. Well, once the fish come on board, we dump it down into a holding tank aft, and... Uh, How much can that take? That can hold uh, approximately 50,000. Uh, we don't catch over 30,000 at a time. That takes our crew uh, approximately an hour and 15, 20 minutes, uh, sometimes an hour and a half, depending on the size of the fish. To cut that is? To cut that. It's uh, gutted, the gutter's removed. Uh, it's uh, left in a bleeding tank for a short time. Uh, it's washed. It goes onto the hole and is iced. So those fellows are pretty fast cutting fish, are they? Yeah, I must say we have a very good crew. The timing seems to work out just about right. By the time they get certain that uh, one tow fish cut, seems to be ready to, to haul back again. Is that, is that what happens? Well, that's, uh, we time it for that. Uh, we don't uh, take back unless the, the holding tank is completely cleaned out. That way we have fresh fish going down into the holding tank and all tows are separated. We don't, for instance, we don't dump fish down on top of fish. So uh, uh, that would be very bad for bruising and so on. After the fish is gutted, bled and washed, the conveyor belt carries it along to a series of chutes. The chutes lead down to the fish hole, where two more members of the crew put the fish in pens and ice it down. To handle all this fish, 80 tons of ice is put in the hold before the boat leaves port and the hold is refrigerated. I asked crew member Ray Chalk about his job in the fish hold. So what's the system now when the fish comes down here? What, uh, what do you fellas do? Well, we get our pounds ready, ice them off. And every 1,500 pound we goes and uh, boards them off again. So each of these little pins here uh, holds 1,500 pounds of fish? Yeah, right, 1,500 pounds. OK, and how, how deep and how wide would you say each of those pins is? Well, I say each pin is about, I say roughly around four and a half feet, and about, I say about two and a half feet deep. So two and a half feet deep. So the most uh, any fish at the bottom of the pin has on top of them is two and a half feet of uh, ice or other fish. Yeah, right, yeah. So what's the idea of, of operating these small pins instead of having a one big large hold? Well, it's for the quality of the fish, eh? You know, you haven't got so much weight on, on your fish, and you end up with a good quality, eh? There's that word again, quality. It's clear the effort is being made to improve it, and there is room for improvement. In the past, the percentage of top quality grade A fish coming off northern cod trawlers has been very low. Federal fisheries have even put it as low as 14%. The Kirby report has said that the future of the trawler fishery lies with the northern cod. Quotas are expected to double in the next four years. But for the industry to survive, it must grab more of the top quality, high priced market. And all that must start here, on the decks of our northern cod trawlers. Well, I guess quality is uh, about the most important part of this industry, because it is food industry. So our object is to uh, blend the highest possible quality of raw material at the fish plant, and uh, that way they have something to work with.